Hi everyone, my name is Hamid Razifard. I'm excited to tell you about my work on understanding tomato domestication history using genomics. Why do I study domestication? One reason is that studying domestication allows us to see evolution in action because usually the wild ancestor of domesticated organisms are still around and we are able to make genomic or phenotypic comparisons directly with the ancestor. The other purpose is that we can bring back some of the traits uh, or alleles that are present in the wild ancestors back into the crops. For example, in many crops such as tomatoes, uh, corn and potato, the wild ancestor is more drought resistant or more resistant to diseases and it will be very useful for modern agriculture to bring back some of those traits from the wild ancestors. Why tomatoes? Tomatoes are the world's largest value vegetable crop. They also have cultural importance. There's a Tomatina festival in, in Spain uh, where people throw tomatoes at each other. I recommend watching some videos on YouTube about that. And it's also a, is a state uh, vegetable or fruit uh, in some states in the U.S. There's also a famous uh, Supreme Court case on whether tomato is a vegetable or a fruit and that's a very interesting story and it's related to paying taxes. So uh, I would recommend looking that up. And here are the main tomato groups. We have the wild tomatoes which we call Solanum pimpinellifolium or SP. We have the intermediate group, which we call them like a persicum variety, Seraciforme. And we have uh, the cultivated tomatoes, which are Solanum like a persicum variety, like a persicum. Um, part of my work is to use mutations that I find in the genome as a molecular clock. What do I mean by that? In humans, in every generation, we have 70 new mutations. And if we see two people that are different by 210 mutations, that means that they have a common ancestor that goes back three generations. I use the same principles to date major events in tomato domestication history. Based on my results, or the, the origin of SLC, the intermediate group, was about 78,000 years ago in uh, Ecuador. And from there, two groups spread northward to Central America and Mexico, and that happened about 13 and 10,000 years ago. And finally, we have the domestication of common tomato, which happened about 7,000 years ago in Mexico. I also do ancestry analyses, similar to what people do. Uh, for humans, uh, you submit your DNA and then they compare you with some references. So um, I use the same methods for tomatoes to understand their ancestry and whether there has been any admixture in populations. And whenever I see a solid color, that means that it's, it's a separate population. But whenever I see multiple colors, I can say that there is some admixture going on between the populations. The other thing I do is called genome-wide association studies. It's a statistical method to see correlation between genomic regions and traits of interest. One trait that is interesting for us is locule number, which is correlated with tomato weight. So if you cut a tomato and look inside, the more chambers it has, uh, chances are that it's a bigger tomato. Uh, so these chambers are called locules, and I did some analyses and discovered some new correlations for some uh, the genes on chromosome 7. And these kind of discoveries will help us uh, improve tomato yield. Here are some conclusions. Uh, thank you for your attention.